In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's Gospel reading, we see the old give way to the new, darkness give way to light. John the forerunner who prepared the way of the Lord, who pointed to the Messiah, and ready the hearts of many to receive him, now decreases. His prophetic ministry has been fulfilled. And now Lord Jesus Christ, having received baptism from John to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill the old covenant, and to inaugurate the new, to sanctify the waters, now begins his proclamation of the gospel with the same words as John. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is indeed at hand. Christ is now in our midst. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. This is the content of the gospel, of the good news, namely repentance. Let's let that sink in. Repentance is good news because it means that change is possible. Forgiveness is possible. There's a path out of the prison that I'm in, a path out of the hell of my sins and my self-centered existence. A light has dawned. A new life is inaugurated, a life according to the Spirit. And the prophet and the prophetic word of Isaiah is fulfilled. Wash and be clean. Put away your evil doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed. Judge for the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. This passage speaks both of the cleansing and forgiveness possible through repentance, but also of the works and actions of true repentance. Repentance is taking responsibility for my failings. Taking responsibility, not blaming other people or circumstances, but owning up before God. O God, be merciful to me a sinner. O Lord, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. But repentance is also a confession of faith in the Son of God, in his power to forgive me, to heal me, and to transform me. Repentance means moving beyond myself, recognizing that it's not in my own power to free me from these bonds, but it is in the power of my Creator only I would seek him, and on my knees ask of him. Our God is so good, beyond any goodness we can imagine. He doesn't want any of us to perish. No, not, not even you or me. He, he desires life with us. But this life isn't a given. God won't force it. My sin is what separates me from him. So let's cast off these chains through deep repentance and cling to him. Brothers and sisters, the trials of this past year, and even the first week of this year, have been a revelation. And more than anything, trials reveal much about what's in our hearts. Yes, much that's good and generous, and glory be to God for that. But oh, so much more that we need to repent of. Long ago, a monk who wanted to live by himself as a hermit was warned by his spiritual father about the dangers of self-deception. If we live alone, his spiritual father told him, we can fool ourselves into thinking that we're meek and gentle and we've acquired many virtues, but this is delusion. It takes someone to irritate me, to upset me, to reveal the anger and passions that are lurking unhealed in my heart. And that very person who irritates me is actually my benefactor. Because without him, how would I ever become a better person, learn to love my neighbor, 
learn patience, and learn not to return evil for evil. And the same is true more generally of the times that we're living in. When, we, when everything is going well externally, we might fool ourselves into thinking that everything is well in my soul. But God in his providence allows tribulations to come into our lives that our weaknesses might be revealed and that we might repent and be saved. Oh, how wrong it would be to simply try to forget the past year, the recent strife, how much it has revealed about us and about my heart. Let's instead begin this new year the way Jesus Christ invites us, the only way that can bring us out of the prison of misery, anger, resentment, and pain, and into the light, joy, and peace of the kingdom. Let us repent. So let us close with a prayer together. O Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my compassionate Lord and Savior, I have sinned countless times before you this past year and every day of my life. Forgive me. I have not sought first the kingdom. In times of fear and doubt, I have not been quick to turn to you. I have placed politics before the kingdom. I have judged and despised those who hold different views than me. I have longed to return evil for evil, to meet violence with violence. My heart is a dead stone without compassion. I have been cruel to those around me. I have lacked empathy. I have been quick to gossip and speak ill of others. I am not encouraged but drawn away from those not like-minded. I have judged those in authority, both civil and ecclesial. I have usurped your divine authority and placed myself in the judgment seat. God, forgive me. I have wished ill upon others. I have been overcome by fears, anxiety, and despair. I have not trusted in your providence and care in my life or in the world. I have been afraid about worldly things, health, money, possessions, not remembering that you commanded me to be anxious for nothing, that even every hair on my head is numbered. I have sought comfort in anything but you, in food, drink, entertainments, dissipation. I have defiled myself in unclean thoughts, words, and deeds, not remembering that I am called to holiness and a temple of the Holy Spirit. I have been unfaithful to you, O Lord, unfaithful to my spouse, my parents, my children, my friends. I have spoken ill of them behind their backs and engaged in poisonous and ruinous gossip. I have made excuses that kept me from your divine services and the holy sacraments, not placing first the kingdom of God. I have rarely prayed, and not with regularity, and even less so with pain of heart, sincere repentance, and tears. I have neglected all of your commandments. I have forgotten you, O God, hated my neighbor, lacked all meekness, not mourned over my sins, not kept my heart pure, not hungered and thirsted for righteousness, and certainly have not rejoiced in tribulation. O Lord, forgive me. But I confess also, O Lord, my faith in you, in the power of the cross, your death on the cross, and your life-giving resurrection. I confess my faith in your goodness and love for mankind. I confess and sing of your mercy, how you desire not the death of a sinner, how you have time and again run out to meet me and embraced me while I was yet afar off just beginning to take my first steps home. I confess how time and again you have clothed me in divine grace, like a rich purple garment, placed a ri the ring, your ring of promise upon my finger. I believe and confess that all things are possible to those who believe, that whatever I ask in prayer believing I will receive through the power of your name. Therefore, O Lord my God, receive me as a penitent as I begin this year as the prodigal son, teach me to trust again, and send your grace to help me endure, 
to forgive offenses and to not remember wrongs, to encourage others, to resist all evil, anger, resentment and contempt, to be filled with your light and to know the power and love of the cross. Permit me to share in your life that superabundant life you came to bring us and promised us. Receive me, O Lord my God, in your heavenly embrace, and permit me to share your life through the communion of your most pure body and precious blood. For to you, O Lord Jesus Christ my God, who opened the way to paradise through blessed repentance, be glory together with your fathers from everlasting, in your all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Mm-hmm.